I murdered Aaron Harper, my closest friend. I stabbed him right in the heart. Look, I know how it sounds, okay? You probably think I'm some unstable lunatic. I'm not. I'm really not. I bet you would have done the exact same thing in my situation. I don't have much time, so I'll just start at the beginning. It'll probably make the most sense that way. Winter break had just started, and I was bored out of my mind. I don't really have any major hobbies, and college had taken up so much of my time anyway, so it didn't really matter. But now that I had three weeks of free time, I had nothing to do. So I had reluctantly resigned myself to spending it sleeping and maybe binge watching a couple of shows on Netflix when, out of the blue, my phone began to ring. When I fished it out of my pocket, I was pleasantly surprised to see that it was Aaron. Aaron is, or was, my best friend all through high school. I met him on the first day of freshman year, and we'd been completely inseparable ever since. We spent nearly every day together, at least that's how it used to be. I was surprised, because it had been a long time since I had last talked to him. Hell, I think that was my first conversation with him since high school graduation. Why would he call me now? I picked up the buzzing phone and answered the call. Hey, is this still Tay's number? Aaron's voice immediately came crackling through the phone speaker. Hey Aaron, yes, this is still my number. I answered, happy to hear his voice after so long. Oh, hey, I wasn't sure if you had changed it or not. He had said, a little bit of nervousness creeping into his voice. What's up? It's been a while since we've talked. I asked, confused about why he called today of all days. Oh, I've been doing pretty good. My record shop has been pretty successful. How's college? He spoke quickly and his voice sounded almost tight, like he was out of breath. There was a good beat of silence before I responded. College is good. I'm glad to hear that your business is doing good, man. I awkwardly answered. Not knowing what to say next, I paused, waiting for him to say something. The silence slowly dragged out, killing the already fairly dry conversation. As it got more uncomfortable, I decided to cut to the chase. Why'd you call me, Aaron? I asked, voice piercing the silence. Well, I was wondering if you wanted to go camping over Mount Mayworth for a couple of days with me. As soon as those words left his lips, I knew I was going. I had to. You see, back when Aaron and I were in high school, we would always camp up on Mayworth every summer, normally with his brother, Jason. It was our little tradition. We stopped after we graduated. I don't remember why. I had to go with him. I couldn't just let our tradition die out completely, and I knew I needed a break from college. Okay, I'll go, I responded, smiling. Looking back on it, I would have saved myself a lot of trouble if I would just hung up. A couple of hours later, I was outside waiting to be picked up. I hadn't packed much, just some camping gear, my phone, and my old hunting knife. The knife was a gift from Aaron, so it felt fitting. It was a cold day out, I remember that. Puddles of dark rainwater from the previous night still littered the area. It was pooling in every nook and cranny in the street, and it flowed into the storm drains, into the abyss that was the sewers below. I checked my phone for any texts from Aaron. None. It wasn't surprising, to be honest. Aaron was the kind of guy to always be late to everything, no matter how important it was. Hell, I remember back in freshman year, he was about half an hour late to his own brother's birthday party. Man, Jason was mad about that. I smiled. The image of Jason giving Aaron a nuggie filling my head. I miss those days. Why did we ever stop talking? Just then, I heard an old but nostalgic dirty red pickup driving down the road, splashing through the puddles in the street, with a pair of dim yellow headlights paving a clear path. I looked up from my phone and looked towards the dirty windshield of the truck. Aaron waved at me through the filthy window. I waved back and walked up to the shotgun seat, and there was a little click as Aaron unlocked the door. 
I opened it and clambered into the truck, putting my backpack on my lap. I shut the door with a thud. Aaron looked a little different from when I had last seen him, but I guess that's to be expected, considering it had been so long. His hair was longer, down to his shoulders. He also wore a large pair of dark sunglasses, and I saw my own reflection staring back at me in those glasses. So, are you ready to head out? He asked. And, in person, I noticed that his voice was slightly different. I can't really place it, but something was off. Once again, this was to be expected. It had been a long while after all. Yeah, let's go. The drive was, to be honest, really relaxing. Aaron and I talked about our lives, and about how things were in high school. Eventually, the building started to become less and less common, slowly replaced by rocks and trees. Before I knew it, the road was gravel, and the looming shadow of Mount Mayworth had enveloped us. Looking up at the enormous mountain, I let sleep take me. Tap, tap, tap. My eyes creaked open, and I nearly had a heart attack when I saw the dark glasses of Aaron looking down at me through the car window. He was smiling at me, slowly tapping the window with his finger. I took a breath, my heart still pounding. It was kind of unnerving to be honest, just watching him smile at me like that. I cautiously looked around, and I realised we had arrived at Mayworth. Hey, wake up, we're here, Aaron said, which was kind of weird, considering I was clearly already awake, and I was staring up at him. I opened the car door and got out. Jeez, man, you scared the daylights out of me, I told him. Sorry, Aaron said simply. I had a feeling he wasn't being sincere but I decided to drop it just because we were losing daylight. We didn't waste any more time and immediately set out hiking up to our usual spot. The hike was easier than I remembered, and soon we reached a small clearing that was full of many memories of our past excursions. It felt good to be back. We had gotten there just before night came and managed to set up the two tents and a campfire before it started getting dark. The mountain was exactly how I remembered it. The trees danced silently in the wind, and the campfire crackled and licked at the air. I took a deep breath of the crisp mountain air, and smiled. I think a break from everything was just what I needed. I gotta remember to thank Aaron later for inviting me. Speaking of Aaron, he emerged from his tent after unpacking. He still had his sunglasses on, and he was watching me sit by the fire. He had this big, giddy smile on his face, the same kind of smile he had when he smiled at me through the car window. Having fun? He asked, grinning at me. Uh, yes, I responded slowly, getting a little uncomfortable with how he was smiling at me. He scratched at his neck, then slapped it. He grinned at me, then slapped it again. You okay? I asked him. Yeah, yeah, he repeated. That's when I noticed something strange. His neck. It was rippling. The skin bulged slightly, and he was trying to slap something underneath back into place. I blinked in surprise, and his neck appeared normal. No bulge, just a small red lump. Damn mosquitoes, he muttered, adjusting his sunglasses. Had I imagined that? What the hell was that? He took a step towards me, and I felt a spike of adrenaline rush through me. I took a step back from him instinctively and took a breath. Hey, are you alright? You look pale, he asked, some genuine concern in his voice. I felt it in my gut that I had to get away from him. I'm going to go to bed, I said quickly, getting up and slipping into the safety of my tent. As soon as I finished sipping up the tent, I finally took a breath. Something was horribly wrong with Aaron. I don't know how I knew, but I could feel it in my gut. What was that bulge in his neck? Had I just imagined that? I reached into my bag, taking out the hunting knife I had brought. I fiddled with the knife, my fingers gripping the handle. I debated sleeping with it by my side, you know, just in case, but I decided against it. I put it back into my bag. 
Sighing to myself, I seal myself in my sleeping bag. I don't remember falling asleep, but I must have. When I woke, daylight was shining through the tent. I crawled from my sleeping bag, quickly got ready and stepped out into the light. The campfire had long burned out and the grey sky had enveloped the sun. Aaron's tent was still zipped shut. Must be still asleep, I thought. Seeing his tent, I remembered what had happened the night before, causing a shudder to ripple across my body. Was that even real? I was tired. Maybe I was just being paranoid. Maybe it was just a mosquito bite. There's absolutely nothing wrong with Aaron. You were tired and seeing things, I said out loud, trying to convince myself. The zipper began moving down the tent. Aaron was awake after all. I quickly turned my attention to the fire, trying to look like I wasn't just watching his tent like a creep. Oh, hey Tay, you're up already? I heard his tired voice ask. I slowly turned around to face him. He still wore those shades. Clothing was the same too. Had he even taken off his damn shoes to sleep? Yeah, I'm awake, I said, not taking my eyes off of him. Great. Hey, I actually wanted to show you something I found up here. It's a little farther up the mountain, he said, walking up and sitting down at the long dead fire. What do you want to show me? I'd asked him. It's kind of a surprise, he responded, letting out a light chuckle. Hearing that chuckle, I felt nostalgia rush through me. After a moment, I made the worst mistake of my life. I lifted my hand to meet his. I was just being paranoid, right? We set out after having breakfast, and I managed to calm down, stupidly thinking that what I'd seen the previous night was just in my head. After about half an hour of hiking up the mountain, we made it to a large clearing where the ground stopped going up. In the center of the clearing, there was a large shimmering lake. The lake didn't ripple. It was completely still and so murky I couldn't see into it at all. What took up most of my attention, however, was the large, dark stone that came out of the center of the lake. It was like no stone I had ever seen. It was made out of an odd dark material. I think obsidian or something like that. It had grey speckles covering every inch of the stone and it rose from the center of the lake, at least 10 feet high. The weirdest thing though was the dark hole at the base of the stone. It was small, no bigger than a doggy door, and it was so dark I couldn't see what lay beyond it. It was the most hauntingly beautiful thing I had ever seen, that stone. Pretty cool, huh? He said, grinning once again. Yeah, I said, distant still focused on the stone. I found it on a high glass summer. It's insane, right? He continued. How the hell have we not found this before? We've hiked nearly every inch of this mountain. I asked, more to myself than anyone. Aaron simply stared at me in response, still grinning. Aaron? I asked. Come on, I want to show you something. He said, completely dodging the question. He then entered the lake, the water soon reaching his knees, then his waist. Come on, he beckoned me, and hesitantly I followed, lifting my bag over my head to make sure it didn't get wet. I felt the icy water envelop my legs, eventually reaching my waist. The floor was unexpectedly smooth, no rocks, no mud, almost like the floor of a swimming pool. We waded through that lake and made our way to the great stone. Aaron hoisted himself up onto a little lip in front of the hole and helped me up and out of the water. I took a breath, shivering from the cold of the water. Jesus, I'm freezing, I mumbled, trying to shake some of the water off. A moment later, I stood up and faced him. It's warmer inside, he said flatly, turning towards the hole in the rock. What, you've been inside? I asked, surprised. The hole was small. How could you fit through? Yeah, it's amazing there, he said, grinning at me again. I felt his eyes bore into me through those sunglasses. I got a horrible, sinking feeling in my chest. A deep, horrible sense of dread. I slowly looked from him to the hole, and I no longer felt curiosity and wonder. I felt fear. A deep, black fear 
that seemed to consume my very soul. Whatever lay beyond that hole, it was evil, and I could sense it. You want me to go in, don't you? I asked in a small voice. Yeah, I do, he said, still grinning. But I realized that the grin was not because he was hanging with a friend, but because he had successfully lured me into a trap. That's when I realized Aaron was no longer a friend. I think we both know I'm not going in there, I said with surprising confidence. He looked disappointed. He sighed woefully to himself. And then he lunged at me. Before I could react, he had his hands around my throat, trying to choke me out. I felt his icy hands lock around my throat, and I struggled madly, desperately trying to get him off of me. His hands were so cold. I kicked and screamed, but he only seemed to falter when I struck him in the face. After his iron grip around my throat began to loosen, I violently pushed him away from me, and I took a swing at him, striking him right in the face. His stupid sunglasses flew off, the lens broken. I smiled, enjoying my small victory, but that joy was killed when he looked up at me, and I saw that instead of eyes, he had two large holes in his face. I gasped in shock, but then it got worse, much worse. Crawling and wriggling, what appeared to be two jet black insectoid limbs began working the way out of the two holes in Aaron's face, like some kind of demented wasp nest had been disturbed. His mouth opened and a third limb, larger, began to make its way out of his mouth. Upon seeing this, I wisely turned and dove into the water, trying to swim away from that place and away from Aaron as fast as I possibly could. But it was in vain. Aaron dove in and landed right on top of me. I felt the wind get knocked out of me, and my mouth filled with icy water before I could force it closed. I felt Aaron hold me under the water, pressing my head down. Aaron always was stronger than me, even back in high school. I thrashed madly, but I eventually gave up, realizing that this was how I would die. Then, everything slowly turned black. I didn't expect to wake up, but I did. I couldn't see at first. Everything was dark. I was lying on something cold and hard. I slowly tried to get up in order to get my bearings, but I ended up knocking my head on something only three feet up. As my eyes adjusted to the darkness, I realized that I was in a room of some kind. It was a large, circular room but the ceiling was only about three feet up, making it impossible to stand. The entirety of the walls, the floor, and the ceiling were made up of that same kind of stone from the massive black stone in the lake. The only light in the room was a soft, glowing, fluorescent blue colour radiating from the spaces where the floor met the walls. Small, pale, blue pods clung to the ceiling randomly. They were tiny, pea-sized, and seemed to grow in clusters. They smelled awful and looked slimy. I decided not to touch any. Even with this light, it was difficult to see. I was in the middle of the room, and around ten feet ahead of me was Aaron, on all fours, facing away from me. That wasn't the weird part, though. The weird part was that he was on the ceiling. After a quiet, tense moment, I knew that Aaron, or whatever the hell it was, didn't know I had awoken yet. Maybe it thought that it killed me. Doesn't matter now. All that mattered is that I had a window of opportunity to get the hell out of here. I looked around for any kind of exit. Anything. My eyes scanned left and right. Nothing. Nothing besides. Were those bones? Don't think about it. I scanned the right. And there it was. A small hole in the wall that led... To an exit? Maybe. Hopefully. I slowly began to make my way towards the hole, avoiding the pale blue pods, but it was like a minefield. Just one step at a time. I could feel my back scraping against the ceiling. Just one step at a time. I tried to hide the sound of my terrified breathing. Just one step at a time. I could hear him scratching at the two cavities where his two warm brown eyes should have been. I was just three steps to salvation. Two steps. Then, a crack shattered the silence. 
and my hope of escaping without being spotted shattered along with it. I slowly forced my head to look down. I had broken some kind of bone. I think it was once a finger. I looked back at Aaron and jumped back, screaming when I found him mere inches away. Had he known I was awake the whole time? He skittered towards me, mouth wide open. I lifted my boot-clad foot and kicked him right in the mouth. He fell back, a shriek escaping. I kicked him again. Then I kicked him a third time and I felt his nose flatten against my boot. Aaron let out a much more human-sounding scream and I crawled madly through the hole. The hole led into a tunnel. I could hear him screaming behind me. I crawled and clawed up the steady incline of the tunnel. I didn't care when I felt cloth and skin tearing off my knees and my elbows. He was getting louder. I don't know how anyone could ever scream so loud. Looking back on it, I didn't even feel like I was in control. Like some primitive survival instinct took over and I was just in the back seat. I only really noticed the pain when I crawled out of the tunnel and into the light and saw how badly I was bleeding. The light itself was blinding at first, but soon I realized I was back on the rock in the lake. Aaron must have dragged me down here once he thought I was dead. I didn't waste time. Couldn't. I dove into the water, and I bit down the pain I felt from the agony of the cuts touching the water. I swam as fast as I could, away from that hell. But I heard a splash in the water. He was coming for me. I had just barely reached the shore when his fingers snatched my ankle. I yelled and kicked at his fingers. I heard one of his fingers break, but he did not let go. Aaron tried to drag me back into the depths of the lake, back towards the stone. No, no, I screamed. I couldn't bear going back there. I kicked and kicked and clawed. By some miracle, I managed to slip out of the boot he gripped, and I got up and bolted into the forest. My entire body felt like it was on fire. Blood ran down my arms and my shins. Never in my life had I ever ran as fast as I ran then. But it was inevitable. Aaron caught up to me. He clawed at my back, managing to grab one of the straps. I felt myself get ripped back, and Aaron started whipping me around like a rag doll. He had to have some kind of supernatural strength, because it was so strong that he lifted me. My feet didn't even touch the ground. When he finally threw me, I flew through the air for a long second, feeling my heart go up into my throat before crashing into the ground. Gasping and coughing, I got up. Aaron looked even worse than before. I could see his purple and blue veins bulging beneath his skin, and they were moving, writhing and wriggling like worms or snakes under his skin. His broken nose was crooked at an odd angle. The insectoid appendages still reached out at me from his eye sockets. Tay, help me, please, Aaron gargled out. Was Aaron still in there? Was the person I once knew still there? Please, kill me, Aaron choked out. And that was the last thing he ever said, because his head suddenly split open, revealing the source of the insectoid appendages. It was jet black, and it looked like a horrible mix between a huntsman spider and a cockroach. It was coiled around his broken skull, and I could see that it was attached to his brainstem, having severed his spine from his head. I realized that the bulge I'd seen the night before was probably part of his vertebrae. It was controlling him like some kind of demented meat puppet. But that was Aaron, the real Aaron, talking to me. Was he still there, trapped in his own mind while his body was used as a puppet? I couldn't let that thing, that creature, do that to him. I couldn't let that thing exist. I knew what I had to do, for Aaron's sake. I took off my pack and took out my hunting knife, dropping the pack to the ground. It was the knife Aaron had given me. The one I'd brought. It was fitting. I charged and managed to stab him right in the heart. Blood splattered across my face and I heard a strange gurgling sound. Maybe it was Aaron trying to scream. The knife sank nearly to the handle and Aaron dropped like a rock to the forest floor. Almost immediately, the insect leapt from Aaron's head and onto my face. It vomited a bunch of foul-tasting white foam all over my face, 
making a horrible screeching noise that reminded me of a cicada buzzing. I coughed and gagged. The foam tasted like moldy cheese and spoiled fruit. The disgusting insect crawled all over my body. I frantically swiped away the foam. I realized that it was riddled with those little blue pods from that place under the lake. I swung wildly with the knife of the insect, slashing off one of its front appendages. It squealed and tried to scurry away, but I didn't let it get far. I raised the bloody knife and made sure that thing was dead. Then, it was just... over. Everything got real quiet, and the smell and the pain started to set in. I cried for a while, buried the knife and Aaron. Then, I walked down the mountain. Everything was a haze, but I think a hiker found me. They brought me back and I talked to the cops. I told them Aaron disappeared after he went on a hike. I explained away my injuries as from a fall I had while searching for him. If I had told them the truth of the insect and the strange rock in the lake, I'd probably be in prison right now, or a psych ward. After a week or so in the hospital, I went home. Now I'm here, telling this to God knows who. I know, you'll probably believe that this is just the ramblings of an insane person who went nuts, killed their best friend, and blamed it on a fantasy monster and is now confessing their sins. If you want to believe that, I can't really convince you otherwise. But there is a reason I decided to write this all out. When I first got home, I noticed that the veins in my wrist were moving. I also noticed that it's been getting harder to see. Even now, I can feel things crawling around underneath my skin. The pods in the white foam. I must have swallowed one. Or maybe a couple. Doesn't matter. I have a jerry can full of gasoline and a lighter. After I finish this, I'll go into my shower, set myself on fire, and make sure those things can't use my body. I don't know how much longer I'll be the one in control. So, I'll leave you with this. If you ever find a strange, shimmering lake with a stone in the middle of it, up on the mountain, run like hell. Some places should be left alone.